One last codex entry from the descent before we move on. This is the place that we found, the very last place, and then we, we put down the flag, but it didn't give us the codex properly. The Wellspring. In a time that only the stone remembers, there was a taig in the deepest caverns ruled by a wise old king. The riches in the stone had provided well for the taig. Lyrium flowed like water from the ground. Gold and jewels sprouted from the walls like mushrooms, and the people wanted for nothing. One day, the king returned to the stone and left behind two sons to vie for his throne. Neither had been named heir, and so each sought to prove their father's assembly that he was best suited to be king. This is a very common situation that comes up, huh? We had that situation at the Hissing Wastes too, remember the tombs? Actually, those were dwarves too, weren't they? Was this the same family? But those were, those were dwarves that went to the surface. The first son journeyed far and wide across the deep roads, forging alliances with other tigs, and returned home bearing word of the goodwill of distant kingdoms and their promises of future friendship. But the assembly was not impressed with words and promises, and would not name him heir. So the second son mined the ground for wealth, Every last scrap of lyrium, every nugget of gold he dug up and gifted to the taig. But the assembly, accustomed to abundance, was not impressed. So the second son dug farther and farther into the stone, so far that he broke through to the other side and found the sky. And this he claimed for his taig, and the assembly named him king. Oh, this is sort of a confirmation that what we saw was clouds, it's not mist then? At least it appeared to be like a sky. But the assembly wanted him to bring back his treasure for the taig. The new king climbed down and down the endless mine until he reached the sky. But try as he might, he could not pull the sky up, nor strike it to pieces with his pickaxe. The new king mined out more and more earth, trying to carve a path to the sky, and finally, he undermined his taig so much that the whole kingdom broke loose and fell far, far into the ground and up into the sky. Falling far into the ground and up into the sky. Before seeing the place, we'd be like, what the hell does that mean? But now we kind of know. King, Assembly, and Taig were never seen again. The king who claimed the sky from songs that only Nugs can hear. By Paragon Ebrian. Oh, the same book about the, the king of Nugs and all that. People have seen this. Some people have, but maybe because... Well, this is probably a bad event, right? So maybe it would want to be suppressed by the Shaperit. I feel like right now, Shaper Valta can't be the only dwarf who knows about this. How long do dwarves live again? I don't know, but she can't be the only person who knows, right? To For it to not be in the memories, somebody manipulated it to be like that. Somebody said, let's not put it in, or somebody said, let's remove it. So if that somebody or their descendants are still alive, then maybe we can learn more. Dagna! Well, how are you? What? I'll see you later, Dagna. I can't wait. I can't tell her about what I saw in the deep roads. Are you kidding me? She would kill to know this. Oh, really? With anvils. Point made. They just had to add one conversation, but no. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the last DLC of Inquisition. It's been a long journey, but we're finally here. We are gonna... Yeah, it seems like we've done a lot with the Inquisition, and we're gonna jump ahead to two years later, huh? Hey, Josephine, how are you? Hello, my darling. I did a brief check. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anybody has any new dialogue, so I think we can just move right on. Two years later. What's the Inquisition gonna be like? Oh, we can finally check on what happened with the... the cultural exchange. With the Abomination, quote-unquote. As per Commander Cullen's suggestion, only our own scholars have spoken with Sigrid Gulzdun about the Avar's unique magical traditions. It's not quite the splash on the social scene I hoped for, but the information is valuable nonetheless. It's fine. It's fine. It just feels so bad that we're parading her around like that. Okay. We ready? We're ready. Like, actually... I'm a little bit frightened. <laughs> Attend the Exalted Council. This will jump. It will lock off all other areas and plots and jump to 944 Dragon, two years after the death of Corypheus. There's no going back from this point. With Corypheus dead and the threat of the Fade Rifts and Demons waning, no thanks to the Inquisitor who's been doing nothing about closing the Rifts, both Orlea and Ferelden have begun to raise questions about the future of the Inquisition. Divine Victoria has promised to shield the Inquisition from political matters for as long as possible. Eventually, she plans to call the Exalted Council, a chance to determine the role and possibly the fate 
of the Inquisition. Let's go. Divine Victoria will not call the Exalted Council until you are ready, Inquisitor. I am ready. The Exalted Council will be held at the Winter Palace outside Halam Sharal, thanks to Divine Victoria's negotiation with the Ambassadors. We are ready to depart at your convenience. It's been two years. I guess Josephine and I are still dating, but Liliana probably not working with the Inquisition directly anymore. She's got to take on her full-time job as Divine. Never thought we'd be back here again. Winter Palace. Hopefully this time will be a little bit less hectic. Probably more drama all the same, though. People are here to discuss whether we should be disbanded or something. Is Celine still the Empress? I'd assume so. Another parade, another bloody negotiation. Smiles, everyone. We must be careful how we present ourselves. Why did Divine Victoria call the Exalted Council? She's kept Olay from bothering us for the last two years. At increasing political cost, yes. She has done all she can, but the Exalted Council has become necessary. Orlay would control us, and based on their many marriage proposals, they have specific plans for you. <laughs> Our real concern is Ferelden. They would see us disbanded entirely. Is that a problem, honestly? That's what the last Inquisition did. Did their thing, got out of there. This man. I'm not exactly opposed to it right off the bat. But I'm only not opposed to it because the old Inquisition ended the same way. I guess it's a bit of a shame to have a thing going on and then not. Inquisitor, it has been too long. I hope the years have been kind to you. Have you been, Mother Giselle? I spent last summer in Empress du Lyon, distributing food sent from the exalted plains. The Dales are finally recovering. I bet in the past two years the Inquisitor didn't close a single rift. Corypheus left a great deal of damage for us to repair. I appreciate your efforts. And I yours, your worship. I should mention that your forces at Suladin Keep were of great help. Please give my compliments to Baron Deschedin. Divine Deschedin. Victoria asked me to greet you on her behalf. She is currently attending to the Ferelden Ambassador's concerns. Who is the Ferelden Ambassador? How do you think Divine Victoria has done these last two years? It is hardly for me to say, Inquisitor. Oh, with respect, that's never stopped you before, Mother Giselle. Victoria has proven adept at winning allies with both her intelligence and her faith. It is a blessing in these trying times. We are lucky to have her. Good. It's been chaotic. But two years later, hopefully some order has come back. I don't think we need to really talk about this. We know she's talking about Liliana. You can probably just call her Leliana in private conversation. You can, Inquisitor. I prefer to use her divine name. Fair enough. Our last divine once joked about why I insisted upon calling her Justinia. She called it my way of reassuring her that I had not completely forgotten who was in charge. Ooh. I'll speak to Divine Victoria. I believe she would appreciate that, Your Worship. The Divine sees the good that you can do and have done. Duke Cyril will wish to greet you on behalf of Olay. I believe he is currently speaking with the Tevinta Ambassador. Many of your friends have returned as well. I hope you have a chance to speak with them before the Exalted Council begins. Okay. Who has returned for the Exalted Council? Your dwarven friend, Master Tetras, for one. Eric? I understand he spent much of the last few years in Kirkwall. I believe Sir Blackwall has returned as well, although he now uses the name Tom Ranier. And of course, there is the Tevinta Ambassador. Enjoy time with them Who while is that? you can, Your Worship. I doubt you will have the chance once the Exalted Council is underway. 
You're not telling me it's Dorian, right? The Imperium sent an ambassador. Yes, your worship. Dorian Pavas ah. has taken the chance to return from Tevinta. It will be good to see him again. I owe him my apology. I allowed mm. my distrust of Devinter to cloud my judgment. He took a great risk coming to help us and deserved better treatment. You're going to apologize to Dorian? I have little patience for those who cannot admit they were wrong, your worship. Myself included. I will have to make my apology somewhere public. He will want an audience for his reaction. Y you want to apologize for mistrusting him as Devinter? Or do you want to apologize for the whole dad fiasco? Because you tried to make us go, Hey, why don't we just kidnap Dorian and bring him to Redcliffe so that his dad can see him? You apologizing for that? Or just the whole Tevinter thing? Uh, I, I saw Colin and Josephine stroll in, so I just sort of assumed that the Inquisition has been the same, minus Liliana, but clearly not the case. A lot of our people have left already. Varric said he was going to go help out people at the free marches and Kirkwall and all that. Mm -hmm. Dorian's been gone, back to Devinter, like he said he would go back to, because he wants to make Devinter great again, but in a non... non corypheus kind of way. What about Iron Ball? Are they still together? Maybe we can ask him about that. Yeah. It's... some things are the same, some things are different. Thank you, Mother Giselle. Your Worship, a final question, if I may. This exalted council... Thorelden would have the Inquisition disband. Ole sees its power as another feather in a chevalier's helmet. What do you wish to do with the Inquisition? Well, this is different. You once told me about the first Inquisition that took place 800 years ago. You said that when their battle was over, that Inquisition soldiers sheed their swords and went home. If our battle is truly over, perhaps it's time for us to do the same. Thank you. Make a watch over you, Inquisitor. I will not keep you any longer. Yeah, I'm not inherently opposed to disbanding. And I presume for the last two years, we've heard nothing about Solus. If somebody doesn't want to be found, you can't find them. It's just like how Morrigan stayed under the radar for that long. Ooh, what do we have here? Winter Palace! Things left and right! Alright, let's let's look around. Catch up with old friends. Who is the Ferelden ambassador? Who is the Orlesian ambassador? I'm wearing this ugly outfit again. It's not ugly, but I... It's I feel like I'm attending a ball. <laughs> this is still open? No more stuff for us to find? Hey, wait, they... This is a little bit changed. Yeah, this is changed. This is new. The first Grand Enchanter. Grand Enchanter Lothair Hardwin was the first leader of the Circle of Magi when it was founded in 120 Divine. After Hardwin distinguished himself in battle during the Second Blight, Emperor Draken himself endorsed him for the position. From all accounts, the Grand Enchanter performed admirably, but some speculate Hardwin was a second choice, that Draken had another mage with connections to Inquisitor Meriden in mind for the job. I mean, Meriden himself is a mage? Tellingly, these debates are based on a half-finished letter to an army captain and the guest list of a party where Meriden and the Emperor were in attendance. If any proof ever existed, it is likely dust. The idea's marriage should be treated as such for scholarship's sake. There must be something here. A giant painting is here. A bone. Expensive dog treats. Fancy scroll work and happy looking dogs adorn the sides. Smells faintly of ham and not despair, but excess. <laughs> excess is a good word to describe Orlay. Okay, so they've done some renovations over the years. Ooh, got stuff happening over there. Of course, we're not really gonna spend time socializing. Victoria keeps close counsel on her position. Good the Chantry at its best, waiting for the right moment to wedge itself in. <laughs> hey, you do good to remember 
The Divine used to be part of the Inquisition, and we helped save the world, okay? Don't say it like she's butting in, like she's not related to anything we're doing here. Why are you guys hiding in that little corner behind... That guy is so close to the flag, he's basically smelling it. <laughs> Liliana in the last few years. Inquisitor, thank you so much for your kind inquiries. I'm doing very well, although I have been quite busy. Selecting new staff for my apartments at the Grand Cathedral has taken me so much longer than expected, and if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to borrow Scout Harding for a few weeks to help me find more nugs. Liliana, listen. In the deep roads, there was a nug king. I cannot possibly hire anyone to a permanent position without first observing them in a room full of baby nugs, and all the litters I have on hand are nearly full grown. In any case, I will see you soon at Helamshirol. Until then, Liliana. She still signs her name Liliana. <laughs> Is this a joke or not? I can't tell. <laughs> Ooh. Josephine, in the last few years, my dear Wellens, Commander Cullen has reviewed the soldiers. I have written and received so many letters from the Orlesian court, our birds practically blot out the sun. We are as prepared for this exalted council as we will ever be. I know this past year has been full of formal meetings, goodness knows I have attended many myself, but this one will truly test the alliances and friendships we have worked so hard to build. Take courage, darling, and please visit me before we begin the exalted council. It would make me so happy to see you. Love, Josephine. Josephine, we probably see each other every day. <laughs> Cole, in the last few years. Inquisitor, your suggestion regarding the young man Cole was excellent. He displays an uncanny ability to locate missing people. When hostile forces held our agents and we feared they would be killed if we approached, Cole was able to reach them without being detected. While he has been less useful overall at extracting intelligence, I have learned to trust his instincts about whether a target is trustworthy or malicious. He's so useful, he's like a lie detection machine. Per your request... Charter. Per your request, I have limited his assistance to rescue operations or attacks on clearly hostile forces. Whatever magic lives in the young man's mind, it would be poorly served by the less pleasant necessities of our work. His remarks about my family, while not germane to the mission at hand, were also greatly appreciated. Appreciated for once. Oh. No more gossip. Or blackmail material. Wow. Okay. Crumpled silk napkin with some words inked in the corner. There was once a man from Hosburg. All right. Lots of stuff to look around. Wonderful. Oh, Josephine, you're standing right. What the? <laughs> Hi, darling. It's so good to see you, darling. I've been fielding Orlesian diplomats all afternoon. Have they given you trouble? Not at all. It is quite alarming. It means they are all saving themselves up for later. Would you walk with me? I should like to take some air before the Exalted Council becomes inescapable. Reminds me of our first walk. The palace has been most accommodating. We are, after all, here at their insistence. But the ministers may... No. No more talk of the council. This meeting was to spend time with you in a more relaxed fashion. <laughs> I'm a little bit curious what's going on with your family stuff. Because you were working two jobs by being with the Inquisition. And it seems like you're, well, you're still here. Did one of your siblings take over back at home? <laughs> Is this in your daily notes? Three to four o'clock idle chat with the Inquisitor. Of course not. <clears throat> Not precisely. <laughs> the truth is, there is a small entertainment happening tonight, to which I may be able to find a pair of invitations. You'd like me to go with you? Very much so. In all the years you've worked with Orlais, you had so little time to enjoy its culture. We sound so formal with each other. Yeah, sure, let's go. Perhaps you're right. These meetings and talks don't allow for much leisure time. And then back to Skyhold without a moment's pause to take in where we are. Sometimes, I'm afraid I do not make enough time for you, my love. Please, come with me tonight. Nah, yeah, it's fine. We're both workaholic types, I guess. Except I haven't really been working on the whole closing rift thing. Uh... <laughs> and what is this small entertainment? Something to ease our minds. I would very much like to surprise you with the details. A surprise? Okay. 
If it makes you happy, how can I refuse? Oh, wonderful. I was worried we wouldn't find the time. The past years have been so busy. We have earned at least a few moments of rest. A calm night out sounds... Oh, bravo! Bravo! What? Oh, we went already? Was the woman in gold playing a king? Who was the man in feathers? Oh, we watched the play. Oh, it's all very simple. The first actor's mask is determined by... Uh, well, I will lend you the program guide. But tell me, did you enjoy the performance? I thought we were preparing for the Exalted Council. Oh, okay. I mean, that... It was good. But you're better. The performance pales in comparison to the lovely lady I saw it with. You are sidestepping the question. <laughs> Love leaves my tongue tied. Well, in that case, I suppose allowances can be made. I would have liked to see it. But how does this work out timeline-wise, though? I thought we were... I I guess it just does. I treat it like a, what? It's like a, the Citadel DLC in Mass Effect. This is the relaxing time after saving the world. I do hope you recovered from your night at the opera. Any ear ringing should go away in a day or two. <laughs> is it that loud? Hello, my love. Hi. Hello, my love. Okay. Well, I would have liked to save you for last, but... You were right there. It just made sense. That's fine. We'll catch up with everybody. Seems like there might be a lot of letters to read too. About what people have been doing in the past few years. This is giving me PTSD of how much stuff we could find back at the Winter Palace. Two years ago. Expensive dog treats. Again? <gasps> Hard in Hightown, Chapter 10. Don and Brenegovich had been pursuing the killer of Magistrate Dunwald without food or rest, and so far all he had was a seal of an imaginary group, a wounded arm, and a package that contained a rusted to Winter short sword. He was past exhaustion, and every breath made his head throb like he'd had too much to drink. He was getting too old for this shit. He couldn't go to the barracks with a knife wound he'd picked up off duty. If the captain taught him, and she would, he'd be thrown out of the guard for sure. That left one option. The Chantry Clinic turned no one away, but it usually didn't have to. The presence of three Circle Healers was more than enough to frighten most decent folk into deciding to wait and see if they got better on their own. Aside from a few drunken beggars snoring in the beds, the clinic was quiet. The healer didn't ask his name and tended the wound with only a disapproving frown. In a few breaths, his arm was as good as ever. Pity magic wouldn't mend his coat sleeve. As he walked through the nave toward the exit, he heard a voice. Guardsman, I was just about to look for you. The deep black gown she wore only made her eyes more otherworldly. A scent like lilacs filled the air around her. She may have been dressed in mourning garb, but she was dressed to kill. <gasps> it was the wife! Dawn and bowed. Lady Marielle. We should talk. I may have a lead for you. <gasps> it was the wife! These things, you gotta suspect the people closest to the victim, of course. I don't know if we'll find another chapter. Maybe that's gonna be our conclusion. After all these years, I assume Hard in Hightown 2 has already come out. Bard. Who would bar the Inquisitor? Oh, they expanded this part, didn't they? Yeah. This area didn't used to be that big. Who's here? Who wants to talk? Varric! How are you, my guy? Still wearing the same shirt from two years ago. The Prince of Starkhaven wrote to you again. Oh my god. Of course he did. Just put that one in the pile with letters from the Merchants Guild. And the Captain of the City Guard had a very colorful message for me to deliver to you as well. Inquisitor! Andraste's ass, am I ever glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, Varric. Am I interrupting something important? Yes. 
Which is perfect <laughs> because Bran here needed a break. Oh, Seneschal uh, this Bran. Is Bran Caven. Until recently, he was the Viscount, provisional Viscount, of Kirkwall. The Seneschal, or that the ex-Seneschal. Your mopey haircut. I didn't recognize you. And what are you doing now? I have resumed my post as Seneschal now that Master Tethras has been elected Viscount. Oh! You're the Viscount of Kirkwall now. Well, it seems the two of you have a great deal to discuss. Why don't I just leave you to it? So, it turns out you fund enough reconstruction efforts in a city-state, the nobles give you the worst job they can think of. I can't believe you took it. I might need to sit down. You're the ruler of Kirkwall now, all of it. That's not that big a deal. I have a really pointy crown that I wouldn't be caught dead wearing, but that's it. They voted me in because I got the harbor and businesses up and running again. They want shit fixed, and I can do that. Anyway, I was hoping I'd catch you before the summit got underway. I got you a sort of present. Oh. It's official recognition of your title and holdings in Kirkwall. Congratulations. You're a Comtesse now. Wait. You can't actually do that <laughs> without... Too late. Already did it. I also drafted an alliance with the new elf-led city council of Wycombe, so Clan Lavellan has some political muscle to flex now. That needs to be reviewed by... <clears throat> you were leaving us to talk, remember? <sighs> <laughs> Poor Seneschal Bran. Wow, that feels a little bit like nepotism, though. The Clan Lavellan part. Varric as a ruler? Mm. I don't want to write him off and say he can't be one. But it's not what I expected from him, for sure. Everyone changes and grows, though. This seems a little bit more negative, so I'll go with a more neutral confusion. This is possibly too much, Varric. I don't know what to say. That's nothing. Practically nothing. Don't mention it. Bran oh, is still watching that us. That reminds me. <laughs> it's the key to the city. Oh. You can't give that away without <laughs> approval from the council and a special ceremony. It... It's just symbolic, anyway. It controls one of the giant chain nets in the harbor. Really? That is so much better than I thought. He let you bring it with you. This operates those giant chains. Can I try it? No. I don't know how this council thing is going to end for the Inquisition. But whatever gets decided, you've got a place lined up in Kirkwall if you want it. Also, uh, control of the harbor, I guess. Anyway, you should meet with the diplomats. And we'll get in a game of Wicked Grace before I go back, though, right? I wouldn't miss it. Don't bet any public buildings this time. <laughs> it's like Monopoly. Oh wow, people have been changing and doing things. It's all suddenly a little bit too much. I hear Cassandra somewhere. Someone, there's a poem. I'll be here if you need me. The Seneschal Brand doesn't appreciate I'll be it. Here if you need me. Is there a bard somewhere around here? There's a whole ton of people on that side. Which is why I'm gonna not go that side, and I'll go here, because it is less pop- Oh wait, that's the way to go. Arl Tegan! Arl Tegan? That's the main quest? Oh, this is considered the main quest, even though it's a DLC. Oh, is Arl Tegan the Ferelden Ambassador? Maybe. Okay, I'll skip on that side for now then, because... Yeah, that's the main thingy. Let's check out the place! Do we have to find missing bracelets and all that still? Want to put some coins into the fountain? Gold caravan? They've been doing some renovations. Whoa! What the hell? Is that guy a magician? Dog treats. What kind of dog is around here? Half-finished poem. Skin like gauze across the sky, I sigh and fall in evening's lakes, the pools of which deep as your eyes, and eyes of which pierce like... Wakes, drakes, heartaches, cakes? Maker, I hope my lady's patient. 
If she's the right one, she'll wait. Wonderful. Meriden? Did you just finish her song? I heard you singing about Cassandra and Scout Harding. There's a lot going on here. Book just lying right here. Oh, chapter 12! They say you can buy anything in the Low Town Bazaar. It's mostly true. On the right day, you can find vendors hawking spices from Saharan, the legacies of unknown dwarven paragons, maps to hidden fortresses in the Donarchs, and the crown jewels of Antiva. And no bookstore in Thetas peddles more wild stories than Lowtown. Don and Brenikovich made a point of greeting each shopkeeper as he passed so that the continual chant of guardsmen reached the ears of the two large men shadowing him since he left Lady Mary Ellen Hightown. I just realized earlier when they said that the lady was dressed to kill, they meant that metaphorically. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there's a continuation, and he left her. He didn't arrest her or anything, I see. So she really was saying, hey, I have a clue for you, to Donnan. <laughs> the address she'd given him led to a warehouse in the Foundry District, a section of the city populated only by rusted metal spikes and vagrants. Donnan knocked on the door. An immaculately dressed butler greeted him and gestured for him to enter. Guardsman Brenegovich, Monsieur Wagner has been expecting you. Donnan followed him through a labyrinth of warehouse offices to a back room richly appointed with silk carpets and tapestries depicting the execution of Andraste. Two heavy armchairs upholstered in velvet occupied the center of the room. In one sat a smug red-haired man dressed entirely in blinding white samite. The other chair was empty. Guardsman, please, sit. The gentleman spoke with a heavy Starkhaven accent. I suppose you would be Monsieur Wagner? Donnan asked. I am a procurer of antiquities, Sarah Brenikovich, as I'm sure Lady Dunwald explained. Wagner carefully lit a pipe made of a carved bloodstone and inhaled. But we are both men of business, guardsmen. You are soon to retire, are you not? Allow me to present you with an opportunity. Don and turned a critical eye on the tapestry of Andraste's pyre. I'm listening. Wagner watched him through a growing veil of smoke. Do you know what Seamus Dunwald had in his possession, guardsman? What made the poor man worth killing? Do tell. The sword of Asarian. Wagner leaned forward, studying him closely. The very blade that pierced Andraste's heart. Donnan gave him a flat stare. If I believe that were even possible, I think that blade would be worth a lot of coin. Most would look at it and see a rusted piece of scrap. It is no longer the jeweled blade of an Arkin. But to the right buyer, guardsman, the sword is worth an empire's ransom. I know such buyers. Wagner smiled. It is here, in Kirkwall. And if you help me find it, I can make you a very rich man. That doesn't help me with finding the murderer. That's not related. I thought for a second this guy was gonna say, I killed him, but let me cover it up. Let me entice you into covering it up. A lot of people in here. The Gilded Horn. Hey, Cram. I can't talk to Cram. Hey, Iron Bull. Your Worship, I'm glad you're here. Listen, I need you to keep the Chief distracted while we sneak this dragon skull through the room behind him. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's do it. Got it. It's for his birthday. Didn't ask, Cram. <laughs> All right, here he comes. Just keep him talking. He loves talking. Hey, boss. Good to see you. Hey, sometimes people don't want to know the extra details, okay? I'm not complicit in this. I'm just... I'm just doing a thing. I have so many things I can talk about because I'm so smart. <laughs> it's good to see that the veil has largely healed, now that most of the major rifts are closed. You might think otherwise, but the veil isn't technically a physical barrier. It's more like a magical vibration that repels the fade. Mm. <laughs> Most mages hate the thick of battle, but I can't imagine hanging back. It's nice to get your hands dirty. That's why I like you, boss. You swing a sword. It's a weird sword made out of magic. But still. 
You done? Oh my, what the hell just happened? I, I can do this all day. Did you know that Ferelden has its own names for lords? The country is divided into ten is, governed by tens. Inside those are cities and arlings ruled by arls, and then there's the Banorn. It's a large area of countryside ruled by multiple bands. <sighs> Good to know. It's one of the very first things we learned from Origins, actually, because our dad was a Terran, and so... You just have to know these things. Hurry up, guys! It's fascinating to see the remnants of Syrian culture here. Most of it was <laughs> deliberately erased during Orlesian unification under the reign of Mafrath's son, Isarath. Uh -huh. Very well read, Inquisitor. Hurry the hell up already, guys! Move like two centimeters. Do you think news of the Exalted Council could affect the Lyrium shipments from Orzammar? Uh, maybe. Surprise! Happy birthday, Chief! <laughs> oh, you guys! You got me! Oh, that's cute. Iron Bull, happy birthday! But we didn't actually have a good talk, though. That was just me talking at him about random crap. Hey, boss. Wait, that's it? We don't actually get... What have you been doing in the past two years? Bound. Scout lays harding, battles calling, inquisitions, bloody prize. Scout lays harding, smile of warning, smirk at fear, and laugh in the eyes. Born of the ground, loyal and sound, inquisition bound. Scout lays harding without warning. Makes men fall like tarnished crowns. <laughs> what can be said to all who have fled? The dwarf with a freckled face. But all who remained to stand in her way met with her error's fate. Scout lays harding, swift and cunning. Her arrows cut you down to size. Is this looping? No. Well, I'm glad Scout Harding has her own song now. Scout Harding, calling her Scout Harding feels a bit. I don't know. It feels very like we're not. Hey, Sarah, I didn't even notice you. Like, we're not very good friends. Can we call her Lace? By the way, Iron Bull. I got distracted by the song. What was I gonna say about Iron Bull? Are you still with the Inquisition right now? Is that why? He's still calling me boss. Yeah, maybe that's why. We don't have much to say. <laughs> All we did was talk at him. He didn't say a single thing. Sarah's past and now things. Lost another book. Stop leaving them places. The lower journal entries by Sarah. Also several sketches of Skyhold with impeccable cross-hatching. She's still here. Moving again. Less stuff. More things. People things. Too many vow somethings. Name less stupid or lay. Last Jenny checked in. Wasn't worried. Drawing of a gloved fist holding an odd symbol, smashing against the face of a chevalier. The symbol is red and smells of strawberry. Traveling again, and again. Been here before, we're everywhere. Back to the Winter Palace? Never good. Pack bees. <laughs> bet Varric were in trouble. Scratched out. Varric wouldn't take a sucker bet. In for a ten with Cullen. Everyone looks old and tired and fat. Find who shrunk my skyhold clothes. Scratched out. Piss! Don't say the Inquisitor's hand looks bad. It looks very bad. Is Whittle even here? Why do I go where there's no Whittle? Drawing of Sarah and Dagna silhouetted by an explosion. Bees and exploding bees. Charges in the palace. No one will be sleeping. Rainier hugs harder than Blackwall. Still beardy. Josie is best here. Cassandra needs to punch something or she'll explode. Everyone? They'll never call in everyone. Liliana knows something. Knew it. 
Inquisition is in trouble. Hey, Sarah. Here's you and everyone. Glad to be back all stuffed together with the pressure full on again. Yeah. Don't worry, Herald of Everywhere. I came prepared. I know what everyone needs. What does everyone need? Just like best times. We have to. Even though this meeting could affect the fate of Thetis. Wow, that is... That's not even a prank. You're just straight up... You're pieing somebody right in the face? Whoa! That's supposed to be like a pie, right? Or like a like whipped cream. That animation's hilarious. I expected a roof. It's early. Anyway, that was a good run. It's all been a good run. I needed that. And I need... You know it's ending, right? We can say it won't, but knobs in places like this. All they do is end things. They'll try a leash. Or worse. But maybe you aren't ready to quit just because some Lord Piddlebits is scared of us. It'll depend on if the Inquisition still has a need to be around. Is someone moving against us? <laughs> sure. Start with everyone everywhere. Point is, sooner or sooner, all this changes. And you've helped me understand too much. So it's my turn to help you. See, I have these friends. And all of them were the wrong sort of whatever. Their place changed, or it never was. So together, we made an us. Everyone needs an us. And when the world is done saying no and calls you the wrong sort of whatever, maybe we can be that us for you. What do you think, Inquisitor? Want to run some rooftops as a Jenny? <laughs> you want the Inquisitor? Don't I have a few more titles than your usual Jenny? No offense. Some taken. <laughs> <laughs> Words. Look, we don't want you. We want to be there for you. If you want to keep doing, it won't be nobles who help. It'll be friends. If I don't have a job, I'll definitely... take you up. Oh. I don't know if I'm cut up for that Jenny lifestyle, though. I don't want to turn her down at the same time. I don't know. Let's just say yes for now, then. Well, all I have to say is... Call me... Red Frigging Jenny. Way too confusing. You'll get a city. One that rhymes with ass. Oh! I should have said we needed a we instead of an us. Because... <laughs> Wait! Anus! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> to all my friends. Thank you, thank you. Always and ever, Inquisitor. Always and ever. Sarah was never in the great <laughs> Creepy song is creepy. Ugh. Damn! <laughs> Did you just break Meriden's stuff? Oh my god. It's an honor to have a song written about you, Sarah. And, you know, pay her back. Pay her back for her instruments and all that. <laughs> the Gilded Horns drink menu, the Golden Nug, an effervescent white selene wine with a dash of West Hill brandy and a splash of pomegranate juice, muddled with raspberries and a sprig of royal elf root, Hissing Drake, a bold mix of cinnamon infused whiskey, dark lamarin rum, and high rose lava burst, not for the faint of stomach or heart. Benediction, Prophet's Laurel Gin. This must be super rare. Still barely found any Prophet's Laurel in the main game. The Emerald Valley. Distilled by Chantry Sisters and Leeds. From over 70 herbs and flowers. Wow. Night of Shame. Our sweetest and even port with a dash of chocolate bitters and a twist of orange. The Rani Dowager. Rumored to have been concocted by the editor of Orlais most scandalous periodical herself. A tall glass of abyssal peach liquor and fresh cream garnished with Sugared rose petals served on a silk handkerchief with a scandalous rhyming couplet inked on it by the bartender. Bartender must be very busy. <laughs> Is the bartender Iron Bowl? <gasps> oh. Oh, hey, Cole. Um. Oh, wow, that's some pretty intense PDA. Oh. 
Oh! Wow, okay. Cool. Hey, Cole. Inquisitor, I see you have time for afternoon refreshments. <laughs> Did you know that a merchant in the courtyard is selling gemstones the same color as your eyes? Oh. What an odd thing to say. Hmm. I must see this for myself. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate the help getting him elsewhere. I still don't understand Orlesians and their masks, but it makes him happy. And I needed the table. For breadcrumbs. Birds like breadcrumbs. Aww. And floating goblets too, apparently. Oh, Cole. Good day. I didn't see you there. But I saw you. As lovely as your songs. Oh, whoa. What? Oh. Wow, I... That was unexpected. I'm pleased for both of you. The world has ample pain, Inquisitor. The kindness found in Cole is rare indeed. Her songs bring happiness to those who hear, and I can make her happy in return. Well then, carry on. That's good. He's adjusting in his own way, finding his place in life and all that. Oh, thank you for keeping Meriden occupied. Now she doesn't have to sing. I mean, it's great to hear her singing, but she often doesn't know when to stop. <laughs> Hello. Oh, wow. Things have really changed in the past By few years. I was wrong. Soulless, mysterious, self and mage Mastered magic by his own hand Not a Dalish or a city elf Skeptic born into lovely land Dorian rebuilt against countrymen A mage from the Taverner Imperium Charming and suave and just slightly suspect These are the early days we defend And then the later ones came to the fade Like Sarah who stayed to tempt their fate but we all know she was but a rogue The tavern still sing her name Black wall a secret of grey wooden Proud of his life in isolation Brooding and strong, protector of all Recruiting the brave to join the cause Iron Bull's loyal, indulgent one A past brilliant agent of those who run The bull's charges now stay in his sight But he still finds the time to Roar through the night, Vivian, Madame de Fur. Respect of the mages throughout the world. Ruthless to fight by Inquisitor's side. Defying expectations only to rise. And then there's the course or revered ever more like Commander Kalen, who led his men through the Inquisition. A Templar, a knight who stayed with the fight, stout and bright. Oh, sister, nightingale, spy, mistress, veiled in beauty and bow. Or lazy and bard, both tender and hard, brave and bold. Joseph and noble with bright acumen, with grace and charm in hand. 
Ambassador to the wealthy and shrewd, endeared through the land. The Inquisitor surely stands because of these souls we sang. You forgot to sing about yourself, Meriden? Wow, we've been through a lot. You know, despite all the ups and downs, there were ups and we made a lot of good friends along the way. Thinking about Solas and the whole thing about how, oh, he learned magic by himself? Maybe ancient elves just used magic differently back in the day. Yeah, learning magic by yourself, huh? Alright, let's check out some of these other places here. Golden Nug. That's the thing we're finishing the game, right? I haven't really touched it. I saw it in the armor room. It's like a new game plus thing, is my understanding. Wager notes. Notes carried back and forth by runners, covered in different handwriting. What do you say, gentlemen? Three days before the Inquisition sees sense and aligns itself with Orlay? Properly this time? M. Nonsense, Marcel. Ferelden is here for blood. A day before, they either demand it outright or threaten war on us if they don't get it. L. The Divine will intercede. She must. Victoria and the Inquisition are too closely connected in everyone's eyes for her to not interfere. You have great confidence in the Chantry, Elaine? M. A thousand royals is worth of confidence from each of you, if the Divine settles the fate of the Inquisition. Done. A thousand from each of you, once the Inquisition accedes sovereignty to Orlea and the Council of Heralds. You two will beggar me. Leonard, are you out? Don't be ridiculous. A thousand royals on the Ferelden's getting their way after all. <laughs> Our decisions will affect who wins this bet. Hello? There's some stuff we can buy and sell here. What can we buy? What the heck? I... I oh, I... I Actually, I didn't know I had this much money, surprisingly. The Clasping Maw. Unique greatsword. Whatever made this weapon, its flesh appears to be alive. It could be an abomination's blood magic, a spirit twisted into physical form, or some other affront to the maker. It unleashes, I don't know what they call it, an energy that tangles foes together. The power thrills right up your arm. I cast it back into the cave I found it in, if the thing weren't so useful. Oh, what the hell is it? It looks kind of gross. What am I buying here? Profits, Laurel! Oh, now I can buy everything! For real! I don't need it. I'll buy some Profits, Laurel. <laughs> it's not like we're gonna go back anywhere, are we? I can't buy in bulk, really? Okay. What was the other thing I was missing? Rashvine Nettle, was it? I don't remember. The thing for upgrading my potions. I don't think it was that... I don't know. Well, no, no, what am I looting here? Oh, the dog treat. If you'd let me pick it up. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even see you. I was like, hey, how come this place has no merchant? No, oh, okay. <laughs> you don't want to talk? Okay, okay. What else do you sell? Supplies. Okay, cool. Beds and stuff? No, it's more materials, crafting materials. Very cool, very cool. Oh, they got small versions of the alligator skin. Wow. Okay, cool. Black wall. Don't be all alone. Oh, do you want me to call you Tom? Blackwall in the last few years. Inquisitor, I hope this letter finds you well. I apologize for my prolonged absence. I have traced the whereabouts of one more of my former company, and I am writing to you from Kirkwall, where he now resides. I knew him as Private Nicholas Lorry. He goes by Klaus now. Unlike so many of the men I betrayed, Klaus found a way to put his life together without turning to crime. It doesn't in any way lessen the horror of what I did but it was comforting to see at least one life not completely ruined by my actions. Klaus is married to a lovely lady. They run a small bakery. It didn't take him long for recognition to dawn, and then I had two mince pies that lobbed on my head. Pies that were fresh from the oven, mind you. It was a good thing I ducked. I made my apologies. Even after months of searching and making reparations, it was still hard. To his credit, Klaus allowed me to talk, and we ended the visit with ales at the hanged man. I should return within the month. Thank you for allowing me this time, Inquisitor. Yours, Tom Rainier. Right, he was gonna serve the Inquisition continually. Curious about where Vivienne is. Someone like her definitely wouldn't stay. She would go back to the court and all.
Ooh. Fashionably late. I thought you weren't going to show. <laughs> I'm late, and you decide to make the Winter Palace rubble. Eh? Hey, never liked it anyway. Too fancy. So tell me everything that happened while I was away. Cole got a girlfriend. And after the betrayal, and what I put those men through, my sorries were worth about as much as shit. Are you glad you at least tried to apologize? It's hard to say. I go back and forth most days. They needed to know that there's a way to come back from anything. And I wanted to help them if I could. I thought going up there on the gallows was difficult. This was worse. A hundred times worse. Anyway, it's nice to be back. Though I'm not sure what to think of this council. No matter what, you know you can always count on my sword arm and my friendship. Thank you, Blackwall. <laughs> hey! Your aim is atrocious. I'm embarrassed for you. Think you can do better? Yes. Oh, I thought I was gonna get the try. Inquisitor. Okay, go speak to some of our other people too. Don't just be a loner around here. Tint, armor, craft weapons, turn, turn in research. Haven't done that in 20 million years. That's all I had, really? Oh, never mind. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Craft armor. Where is the potion stand? I want to upgrade my potions. There's something here. In this cart? Oh, it's right here, the bone. Is there a dog we should be feeding around here? Seems like it. Oh, here we go. The healing. Oh, this is done. Regeneration potion. Increase, increase duration. <laughs> increase healing. Life ward. Amrita Vein is what I didn't have. Yay! When this doesn't even matter anymore. Yay! Yeah, Rash Vine Nettle, I needed it as well. Oh my gosh, I've never used a single... Oh, I've used a Jar of Bees. I did use some... Oh, wow, there's research for this too. Oh, <gasps> we can add wasps! Damn. That would have been a good one. <laughs> oh, I don't have enough blood lotus. Hey, now we got the wasps. Okay, cool. We'll have to try it out sometime. In fact, I'll change my stuff out to the jar bees right now. Here we go. Chapter 17. Donnan left it to his captain and a dozen of Kirkwall's finest to drag Wagner and his thugs to the stocks. The heavy air gave up and turned to sheets of rain. The ancient grey stone stairs leading up to Lowtown turned into a waterfall. Donnan slogged up the narrow passage, boots squelching with every step. He almost didn't hear the ambush coming. As he reached the top of the stairs, a faint rasp of steel made him throw himself aside into a vegetable seller's table. A sword swung through the air where he'd been and chimed against the rock wall. Don and fumbled at a scabbard and just managed to catch the second blow with his sword. He had a moment as they locked blades to recognize his attacker. The younger man had shed his guard uniform for dark leathers, and his left arm now ended in a bandaged stump. But there was no mistaking him. Javelin? Oh! It was someone close to us after all! Where is the blade of Hesarian? Javelin recovered from the parried blow to slash at Donnan's legs. He dodged back, slipping and nearly stumbling ass first down the stairs. It was you! The inside man! You're the one who killed Devavra! Donnan lunged at the recruit. Javelin quickly moved the block, but Donnan's blade sliced his arm, drawing blood. Give me the sword! I know that pirate hag gave it to you! Jevlin swung a series of hard slashes, trying to break Donnan's guard or knock him down the stairs. In the darkness and the driving rain, the guardsmen struggled to see his attacker. Still, Donnan grinned. You left it at the key. Guess you ran off without it when the lady took your hand off. Not my fault you picked a fight you couldn't win. He tried to edge away from the stairs, but the rookie kept him pinned between the vegetable stall and a fall to his death. 
Javelin lunged, his blade punching through Donnan's armor just below his ribs, but the recruit slipped on a wet stone during his attack and stumbled into his enemy. Donnan shoved him away and over the stairs. His fall ended with a sickening crack of broken bones. Donnan drew a ragged breath and pulled Javelin's sword from his side, trying not to slip on his own blood. The Chantry was a long way off. Wow. Yeah, the Sword of Asarian, all that is somehow related to the murder too. We didn't really get to find out why because we missed like five chapters in the middle. Notes on Palace Guests, a collection of servants' notes. Countess de Vaurier wants a stateroom set aside from three to five in the afternoon for her daughter's harp practice. Must have windows on one side and a balcony. If she proposes a recital, refer her to the Seneschal. Duke Pierpone wants to entertain Ferelden relatives, a barrel of whiskey and three wheels of cheese to be delivered to his quarters this evening. Ban Wharton. His bed should be made up with linens, not silks. Sir Litstone. Complains an old wound in her left leg is making itself felt. Move her to the ground floor. Lady Galati. Duelist. Has requested a sparring partner in a suitable practice ground. Lord Gilderay. To be woken at eight by a maid on even days, a page boy on odd days, don't ask, with a fresh pitcher of water and twelve sprigs of lavender on peach-colored towel, don't ask, carrying these items in silently without making eye contact with his lordship, placing them on a divan, clapping twice, and then leaving without a word. Do not ask. Wow, they treat the guests really nicely, huh? But some of these guests are taking advantage of that completely. Hello, Charter. One of our agents, right? Well met, your worship. Nice to see you in person. Dorian in the last few years. Is he here? Inquisitor, it was good to hear from you, my friend. For months, I've had only the society of Mavaris' fledgling Lucerne party. Junior members of the Magisterium, so filled with fire and zeal and so wildly inept at politics. May keeps a bucket of ice water on hand in case one accidentally immolates himself. Lest I give you the wrong impression, we are making progress but it will take a great deal of skill to keep the Lucerne alive, through the usual schedule of Menrathus, scheming long enough to become a real political faction. Fortunately, they do have me. A new party trying to um, make things better into winter? I'm sorry to hear that politics are plaguing you as well. Must be something going around, like a pestilence or an Orlesian fashion trend. Hopefully Josephine can defuse a Ferelden outcry and persuade the Orlesians to stop circling you with a collar and leash. You know she did always love a challenge. I'll find an excuse to make a trip south soon. We should really catch up in person, don't you agree? Dorian. Very nice that we're hearing about everyone. <laughs> Weird that the letters are scattered around the garden at the Winter, pa at the winter Palace, but oh well. <laughs> Conduct becoming the Inquisition to all members. It has come to my attention that I must remind everyone of the type of behavior expected from us during this Exalted Council. Oh, Exalted Council reminds me of the Exalted March. Hope nothing bad happens here. It is natural to wish to hold our heads high, but remember that we are guests of the Imperial Court. It is upon us to behave with good grace, propriety, and restraint. If you are unsure of how to address someone of gentle birth, my lord or my lady will suffice. If you are fearful that you have overstepped an unknown protocol, speak with your commanders. If they are not available, seek me out. Overimbibing is strongly discouraged at all times. If you are steered into an argument about the Inquisition's politics, politely excuse yourself as quickly as possible. Please do not engage in these debates. If all else fails, trust sense and common courtesy to guide your actions. Sincerely, Lady Montelier. The entire Inquisition is invited. Josephine will be busy. Activity in the Winter Palace. Charter's notes are encrypted. In a code that she can read with Liliana. CM's intentions seem sincere. Asian in place at party tonight where CM is attending. VP left notes at drop as promised. Servant in green livery. Seen leaving guest wing of palace at all hours. Possible tryst? Madame LV's second cousin is a bard and employee of Duke WM. Lord WG plans to meet Lady GD tonight. Neither of their spouses know. Ooh. Lord RW plans to meet Lady SR tonight. Their spouses do know. Lord RW's wife encouraged RW to step out with SR so she could have some peace and quiet to herself. Wow, they have an open relationship going on here. Oh. Uh, I guess we should just keep wearing this royal outfit because we're at a party right now. Sure. Here's my storage. Hey, do you want to see my collection of purple stuff? I don't think I've shown it off. Yeah, look at all this stuff. If I sell it, I can probably get a good bit of money, huh? And then just 
staff a fire drink because I don't know, I want to keep it. <laughs> so much. Oftentimes, it's not even that good number wise, but we just got so much of it. Yeah, for the. <laughs> I kept some of the armor and then the formal attire from last time, and then Cole's hat for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Iron Bowl in the last few years. Thank you for sending the Chargers to assist in dealing with the demons attacking Montford. Their assistance was most appreciated and many lives were saved. The Iron Bull and his Chargers have prevented another civil war from sweeping across Orlais with their efforts in Perindale. The Iron Bull in particular defeated the would-be usurper in battle. We must protect the actions of the Bull's Chargers in South Reach, while the presence of demons and Templars corrupted by Red Lyrium is undisputed. The necessity of your Dwarven Miner collapsing the better part of a mountain on the enemy forces was hardly necessary. The Bull's Chargers were a great assistance in driving back the demons that attacked the shores of Lake Kalanhad. The elf who calls herself Dalish was particularly helpful, and I look forward to her promised explanation of how Dalish archery techniques can create walls of ice or dispel magical barriers. She can do that? Wow. I'm glad we saved the Chargers then. It sounds like Bull's Chargers have still been doing some great work around here.